Welcome to another episode of Closers Are Losers. We're here in August. Summer is getting closer to being over. I'm here with our co-host, our CEO of 7th Level, Matt. How is Sydney, Australia? How's the office there that I have not seen since COVID? Beautiful. It's yeah, a beautiful, it's nice office. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. All right. So today, let's jump right into it. So today I want to cover, went live here about an hour ago in our Facebook group, Sales Revolution. If you haven't joined yet, just go to Sales Revolution. There should be a link on the, the podcast. You can join for free, do a lot of training in there. But I just went over and had probably about 100 people on a live. Like, how do you actually craft a presentation that actually connects the emotional dots with your prospect from where they are now, like their current situation, to where they want to be, like we call that their objective state. How do we get them there in that presentation from the discovery part of our call? Now, it's a little bit different depending on if you do a one call close, two call close, maybe you do a three or four call close, or maybe you're in a really complex selling environment that might take three to four months. You might have five or six or seven appointments, depends on your industry or product or service. But I'm going to go over along with Matt, like a three-step formula that we train companies, no matter what they sell, their product or their service or industry, that kind of connects those emotional dots of what their problems are that they brought up in that discovery call that we helped them find that they might not have even known they had before we started getting on the call with them or Zoom or in person or whatever, and then their objectives and kind of what's holding them back from getting to where they want to be. And when we connect those emotional dots, the prospect actually, it makes sense to them. Okay. So instead of- just Oh, wait a second. You're saying if you have a process yeah. that you follow- uh -huh. And you can actually get a predictable result? We can get a predictable result that. rather than just slapping something out there, 50 page slide deck of how beautiful our, our company's offices look. And we have a triple A rating with the Better Business Bureau. And we won five years of great customer service because nobody cares about that. They can just Google that stuff. And instead of talking about all that stuff about you, we're focused on them in that presentation and solving their problems and where they want to go. And because of that process, we get predictable results. It's very true. I think the pitch is an extraordinarily, the pitch of the presentation phase is an extraordinarily important part of the sale. But I think like a good pitch can save you from a bad sales call and a bad pitch can ruin a good sales call. If you've done everything right, but you present poorly, you start to sell over your words. I think you just put people to sleep. Too much information, right? That it's typically just... will trigger objections that you just Boring. didn't go through, right? Or like you just talked about, you give them too much, 50 pages of, you know, PDFs or slide decks. And it's like being in a boring chemistry lecture, you just fall asleep. For those of the listeners, you know, I deal with a lot of the coaching and consulting side of stuff. And then Jeremy deals with pretty much everything else on the planet. And so that's sort of my wheelhouse. But I know a lot of the, in the industries that I deal with specifically, a lot of the present presentations are very long. They're 15 to 20 minute presentations. It's just, I don't know why. It, it is one of the more frustrating parts when I see people presenting, they refuse to mention anything of importance and it's clearly just a cookie cutter and you can visibly see the prospect turn off and just go into uh, falling asleep mode because all the good work that you've now done for the yeah. last 20, 30 minutes, pulling out emotion, doing all that stuff, you're now a used car salesman. You went back into sales mode. And you know, yeah. the crazy thing is, is we've taken companies that are in very complex selling environments. That's, you know, out of the four industries, I sold in. Two of them were B2B complex sound environments. Two of them were B2C. So I kind of know both like, you know, the back of my hand. And we've taken like complex sound environments, like let's say in medical device sales, we've taken companies and salespeople that had nine month sales cycles to close deals on, let's say, knee implants to doctors. And their presentations were an hour and a half long, which is crazy. Hour and a half long. The doctor has an hour and a half. Does a doctor have an hour and a half to sit through a slideshow? No. <laughs> That's why it takes so long. And we've literally nailed down a nine-month sales cycle down to three or four months, which makes those companies a lot more money, a lot more sales when the sales cycle is half the size. And we've taken an hour and a half presentation in a very complex product or service, you know, and taken that down from an hour and a half to maybe 15 to 20 minutes. And that's in a huge complex sound environment where you're talking about like possibly saving lives. That's not something you can go over in five minutes, a little bit of a different uh, presentation of that. But that's what Matt's talking about. Okay, nobody wants to set through 
an hour to an hour in a presentation, they're just going to zone out. Yeah. One of the companies that we train is a textiles factory in Germany. They supply high-end seatbelts for Mercedes, AMGs, and stuff like that. I actually happen to have their seatbelts. You have in my one car. of those seatbelts in your AMG. I, I do. I do. That's a tremendously technical product because you're essentially you're competing with it's very price competitive. They're much more expensive than all the competitors because their competitors are based in China. Yeah, we managed to shorten their sales cycle significantly and then increase their efficacy. And a lot of it was through not only pulling out the emotion, but by having a presentation that wasn't based around technical specifics yeah. because that's just boring and nobody knows how many nanometers of torque or whatever it is the metrics that they're using. No one knows what that means in real terms, but what it does mean is that your clientele are safer. Exactly right. Like you're not selling the thing. You're selling the results of that thing. You're not really yeah. selling the seatbelt. You're just selling the results of that seatbelt, which is to keep somebody from dying in a major car accident. Exactly. That's what so how saying. do we do that, Jeremy? How do we structure that? So three-step process. I want everybody to write this down. First of all, we want to remind them of the problems they said they had. So typically, whether it's B2B or B2C, typically I I want our clients to have about three to four different pillars of problems. And the first one or two are problems that they brought up or you were able to help them find. Now, sometimes different industries are a little bit different, okay? But let's say, I'm just going to give you an example. Let's say if you sold Amazon coaching or Amazon training, because I was just training a client on this a few hours ago, so it's right in my mind. Their services, they cost like 15 to 30 grand. They train people how to start like an Amazon SBA business so they can have their own business. It's almost like a franchise in a sense. They can make more money. They can have more time. So they might repeat back one of the problems, but then they also want to go over problems that that prospect probably doesn't even know that they would have when they try to start an Amazon business. Because imagine somebody coming from a nine to five job. Let's say they work at an ice cream factory and now they're going to start an Amazon business. Are they going to know the ins and outs of how to do that? No, they're going to have no idea what problems they could even face without this company's training. Okay. You don't know what you don't know. So I want to create doubt in their mind of them being able to do this on their own for that industry. Now for selling seatbelts, it's a little bit different. We'll go over the differences in that. So with Amazon, I might come in and list out one of the problems. You remember how you were saying X and Y and Z that you're not very technical when it comes to, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then I'm going to do this. Here's the three-step formula. So John, one of the biggest problems that people have when they come to us, when they're starting their own Amazon business is they don't know how to pick out winning products. And because of that, they just go in, pick out some products, spend a bunch of money, and just hope and pray that somebody's going to buy. So that's the second step. So the way we solve that for our clients is, and then you go over the specific part of your program or product or service that solves that problem. And then you're going to say, and what that means to you is, and then you're going to repeat back the advantages and benefits of what it's going to do for them because they don't have that problem. So one of the biggest problems that people have when they come to us is which causes X, Y, and Z. So you repeat back what the problem causes. So the way we solve that for our clients is we, then you go over how that part of the program, service, or product solves that part of the problem. And then you say, and what that means to you is, and then you repeat back the advantages of benefits of what that does for them. Those three things, you do that three or four different pillars, problem, how you solve it, what it means to them, connects all of the emotional dots in the prospect's mind, but they don't have objections at the end because it all makes sense and it brings out their pain of problems, how you solve those and what it's going to do for them. Three-step formula, duplicatable, works in any industry. That's why we get results for companies and like from seatbelts to Amazon to medical device, which are all completely different. Your thoughts? Yeah, for sure. I think one of the things that really, really helped me was just having a, again, like a set formula right? Of exactly how I can put together my pitch and presentation and then be able to kind of link it back to problems that the clients are having, which make it feel like you're kind of customizing a plan or a solution yes. for the prospect. Not cookie cutter. Even though it is cookie cutter. And there are different ways that you can kind of even make it seem more cookie cutter. Well, the cutter. formula is cookie cutter, but not the individual yeah. person you're talking to. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, exactly. And so it was like, you know, this is what we're going to do. This is why we're going to do it. 
because I think you'd, you'd mentioned that you were struggling with X, Y, and Z. Well, this is kind of designed to. And so like I found once I started doing that, I was able to, instead of having a pillar, let's say, that was like really exhaustive and went into all the minutia and the details. So what we're going to do for you is we're going to build this and we're going to build this and we're going to do this. And we're going to actually use CPA versus CPM and then all this detail. And then like the people don't care about that stuff. Like, And if they do, they can just ask the question. There was a business coaching program that I sold years ago to trade businesses, they kept changing the offer. And so I stopped like saying what the offer was. Yeah. And this was a really good realization to me because I literally- What industry was that in, man? This is selling business coaching to blue collar workers. Okay. So you're selling like how to scale your business to somebody that might have a a blue collar, like a plumber or electrician or something like that. Exactly. Traditionally kind of a tough niche, right? I literally just sold one, the first call, that was it. And I didn't have to go into any in-depth anything. My call was good enough when I got to the point and they kept changing everything. So I would just sort of talk about these pillars, but it was all based around the first phone call and they were very vague, very nonspecific. And that's when I kind of realized I was like, oh, if you do the work, you don't need this massive drawn out in-depth detailed presentation yeah. phase because you've already done the work and then all you need to do is link a few key concepts back to the individual's problems yeah. and that your solution is the custom fit for them and they really don't care or ask that much specifics about what you're going to do like when a plumber comes to your house don't ask them what they're going to do you just want them to first fix i'm going to go in and unscrew the pipe then I'm going to take this device down through. No, they don't do any of that. They just talk about how they're going to unplug the pipe. Exactly. And so, you know, that was a big eye opener for me. And that was one of the things that really kind of skyrocketed my ability to close yeah. a lot more people was to let go of some of the preconceived ideas that the things that sell programs are features and benefits and specifics yeah. and getting them excited about doing this and this and this and the wacky arm waving inflatable tube man style of selling. So, And most of that comes from with what we teach in NEPQ, which if you're new to the podcast, it stands for neuro emotional persuasion questioning methodology is the presentation should really only be between 10 and 15% of your entire sales process. So if that's a first call close. And let's say you're on there for 45 minutes and you do one call closes. Well, that should only be about seven minutes of that 45 minutes. If that's a two call close, maybe a little bit longer. If it's a multiple call close, let's say we're selling something like cybersecurity to banks, that might be instead of an eight minute presentation, that might be a 35 minute presentation. Doesn't need to be two hours though. There's a little bit difference in different industries. That comes from the AIDA model of selling. Most sales processes are typically, most sales conversations you're taught that about half of that conversation is what? Your presentation. Most people call it the pitch, right? We're hashtag ditch the pitch here. But most people are taught that half the time you're talking you should be talking about your solution and your presentation. We're saying let's lower that down to about 10 or 15% because the sale is really made in the discovery part of that process, a diagnosis process. You're the doctor, they're the patient, right? They know they have the pain, but they don't know really what caused the pain. So we have to ask the right questions that allow them to see what's caused the pain, the root cause, and then how that pain, that problem or problems are actually affecting them even personally. That's even to a business owner, CEO of a Fortune 500 company can be that painful if you know the right questions, okay? So it doesn't really matter what you sell. You use that three-step formula and it's duplicatable. Another example of one I just wrote for another client the other day. Yeah, let's talk about it. You're going to laugh about this. This is for marriage counseling. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So everybody's like, how do you sell marriage counseling? How do you do a presentation of that? Well, it's pretty easy. It's the same three-step formula. So it doesn't matter if you're selling cybersecurity to Bank of America, or like Matt used to sell before he's a sale here, B2B coaching to a plumber, or if you sell shoes at freaking Foot Locker, or if you sell, you know, real estate homes, it doesn't matter. The process- I, I wrote a script the other day for a facility services management, inventory, facility inventory management. I didn't even know what they did. It took me yeah. 10 minutes to figure out what it actually they did. Then from there, you wrote their script and they were, thank you very much. That's great. Yeah, it's really easy. Once you understand the problems that their prospects have and the root cause of those and how it affects them and then how their solution solves that, then you can write out questions through our process that actually works like easy. We don't even need to know how the product or service works. None of that matters because we're not selling the product or service. We're selling the results of that product or service. So with 
marriage counseling with this company. We're not selling the marriage counseling. We're selling the results of that marriage counseling. They don't get a divorce. That's really what we're selling. I'm going to go through this process with everybody. And this is just one pillar. Their product is really like, I cut her presentation down by about 75%. You're going to still feel this is long, but I've cut it down 75%. Her closing percentages, the lady who wrote this up for went from 29% to 61%. And we've only been training her for two months. 29% to 61%. And she still doesn't really know what she's doing. That's exciting. So that means her commission's doubled. And she says, sells marriage counseling. Here's the presentation, one of the pillars. So Amy, do you remember how you were saying that you feel, you want to feel connected and really supported in your marriage? Like you did that first year that you were married to John. And right now it feels like you're caught in this hamster wheel where you and your husband are always just shutting down and arguing all the time, which is causing you both to feel disconnected and question if you should still even be married. Oh yeah, Jen. Oh my gosh. But one of the biggest, so I just repeated back the problems she said she had. Now she's, oh yes, for sure. Then I'm saying this. So one of the biggest problems that clients have when they come to us is they don't know how to change that same reactive reational pattern that they're experiencing in their marriage like you. See what I just did there. See how short that was? So the way we solve this is Dr. Sun's Heal Your Relationship program, which centers around conflict triggers. It's a conflict triggers assessment test you'll go through with your husband because every couple has what we call a unique dance. So in this first pillar of the training, we're going to help you and your husband map out every single part of your dance so you can see it before it happens and then teach you how to customize, how to shift that dance, which changes the trajectory of your dance. So what that means for you is, is once you see this whole dance and pattern and you're able to name it, you understand both of your conflict personas and how they work together. And you know which 1% shift to use and which moment to heal your triggers where your whole conflict dance changes. So at that point, your playful connection starts to come back like you said you wanted when you were first dating. Do you remember that feeling? So your marriage starts to heal itself and your family. Do you see how that would help you? See how easy that is? Just little changes like that. She had this whole long seven pages, you know, here's our corporate office and here's this and here's that and, you know, 10 times longer, just that. And I taught her to boil that down to a couple of little pillars like that. So her presentation went down 75% along with, you know, obviously we're taught her to what questions to ask to bring out emotion even before she got to the presentation. Her sales have already more than doubled in 60 days. That's the difference. I saw her post all that stuff up. That testimony. You did? No, and that's marriage counseling. Now, we have never trained a company or salespeople in that space before, as far as I know, as far as our advanced inner circle program. Now, we might have had people that have had a relationship coach, maybe. That's about it. They might have went through like our virtual training programs. We just don't know. Thousands of people in those. But I've never seen us actually write out a sales structure for that industry. And just by understanding the process, right, from connecting questions to situation to problem awareness to consequence questions to consequence to presentation stage to commitment, we can write out that sales structure in a matter of a few hours and people double sales and they don't even know what they're doing yet. That's how it's duplicatable with anything that's sold. Like you said, the textile company that came one of our clients five months ago in Germany that sells seatbelt parts all the way to marriage counseling, to medical device sales, to cybersecurity, to SaaS, to door-to-door solar alarms. It's all the same. doesn't matter. Yeah. The hardest part a lot of the time is getting the salesperson or the business owner to tell us the problems that their clients are having that aren't specific to technical things, isn't especially with things crazy? like the fabric. Isn't crazy how people don't even know what problems they solve? Yeah. It's like, so what problem do you solve? Oh, we have the highest tensile X, Y, and Z. And we have, it's like, okay, what problem do you solve for your prospect? It takes ages to get it out it of does. it. does. That's like, that's like the first 20 minutes of a scripting session. It's like, okay, what do you do? I do this. It's like, yeah, but what does that do? And what Not does your that solution. Do? What problems yeah. do you solve? Yeah. And then from there, you can just write them down and you can start going, oh, okay, well, you can put yourself in the part of the prospect and then you can be like, okay, well, I would feel this way. If I knew that I was building cars yeah. and I built those cars with you know cheap seatbelts in them yeah. and then I had to do a recall because of those cheap seatbelts, what kind of brand damage would that do to me? Okay, but also, us, also yeah. what if, like what triggered the recall? Yeah. Is it the fact that we had faulty seatbelts in there? You know, which is gonna, gonna potentially cost someone's life. What if my customer's life, that's a big deal. There's a lot of emotional and logistical leverage that you can now, like I said, I guess use 
that's yeah. a bit of a fulcrum point to get that person into the right state to want to kind of, you know, spend more money on a better product, right? So yeah, you got to understand the problems. 100%. If you're a business owner listening to this right now, if you're a sales professional, you're a salesperson, sales manager, and you don't understand what problems your prospects or services solve, you need to go to the drawing board and really start over because no product or service ever made. I don't care what it is. I'm going to give you an example of a product that people don't think is a problem, which I'll show you is a problem, but no product or service has ever been made that didn't do what? Solve a problem or solve an emotional need. No product or service has ever been made that didn't solve one of those two things. Nobody would buy it. Exactly, right? I mean, nothing would be invented. When somebody is inventing a product, they're inventing it because they see a problem in the market or they see emotional needs not being met. There was a car dealership that we trained before we first launched three years ago before you became the CEO. And they sold exotic cars, Lambos, Ferraris, Royal Royce, Aston Martins, you know, cheapest cars, really 250,000 all the way up to a million dollars, right? Bugattis, all that. And I remember their sales manager said, well, what problems do we solve? That's literally what he said when we write our sister. It's like, what problems do we solve? These are just rich people that come in and if they like the car, see how cool it is. They just buy it. If they don't, they don't buy it. And I'm like, oh, contrary. Have, you have no idea <laughs> what type of emotional needs that car actually solves for your prospects. And I said, look, I just bought rich them people on this. have rich friends. Yes. And that's part of it. And I said, maybe you don't understand the emotional needs. Look, if it just solved a problem like driving to point A to point B, they would just go drive a used Kia or a used Honda, right? If you're just solving the problem of how to get to work. You wouldn't have to buy a Lambo. So with that type of sale, you're solving an emotional need. I said, let me give you an example. Status, yeah. A couple of years ago, I bought a brand new Maserati, which was the most expensive car I'd ever bought at that time. It was about 190,000 American dollars. So 250,000 Aussie or whatever it is. And I was like, holy shit, that's a lot of money. So I bought the car and I said, the reason why I bought the car is because I wanted my neighbors and people I grew up with to see that I had arrived, that I was really successful. That was solving an emotional need for mine because when I was in junior high, my stepdad became disabled. We were a middle-class family. All of a sudden we became poor overnight. My mom had to go back to school and be a waitress while she's going to school in her mid to late thirties. And literally I went to practice one time and all of my friends were wearing like Adidas and Nike cleats. And I had to get the cheap Walmart cleats. And I remember as a 12 year old, how shitty I felt. And I was like, I'm never going to feel this way again. So just that right there, my traumatic baseball experience of the cheap cleats drove me to feel that I needed this freaking $200,000 car to show my neighbors, to show my family, to show people I've graduated high school with that I was way more successful than anybody else. That car solved an emotional need. And they're like, holy shit. I never thought about it like that. Well, yeah. Because everything you know? solves something. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, once you're in there for a while and you want to one up people and, you know, I was talking to someone who sells boats and I was like, you know, it's again, it's the emotional need. It's like, what do you want out of the boat? Why do you even look for this type of car that's $250,000 rather than just driving like a regular BMW or something? <laughs> man, I need to flex out. <laughs> <laughs> I need yeah, to so get the Lambo. The right questions to uncover what's behind them even looking at all. Then the salespeople that I bought that Maserati from, do you think they asked me any of those questions? No. They just said, oh, I really like the Maserati. It's really cool and it's fast and it's this and I like this and I like that. And I'm like, well, what about me? Do you care about what I like or what I'm looking for? Yeah. The guy that I bought my AMG off because I bought the top one. Yeah. He tried to like downsell me into the, into like the V6 model. Yeah. He's like, oh, mate, it's a great car. It's the same car. You save like 40 grand. And I was like, yeah, man. But every time I get to a red light and someone's got this version, I'm like, oh, I was a little bitch. <laughs> I was like, I bought the little bitch version. I was like, no, 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 I'm not having that. I want to be the other guy looking at the guy who bought, hey, man, 40 grand is worth it. See, he didn't ask you the right questions to find out what was behind your yeah. why. He your probably could have got me into like the E63 if he really tried, because I bought the C63 AMG, but he for sure, I for sure would have bought the E63. But he was a terrible salesperson. I will tell you, because we, you know, we train several car companies now, salespeople that crush it, their companies crush it. I'd like to go to their type. I'd like to fly into their dealership so I can be sold the right way from what we've taught them. I want to That's explain. nice. It'd be nice, wouldn't it? I have not been be sold nice. in a well in a very long time. I would pay. I get real, I get real oh. shirty at bad salespeople. Yeah. 
I said the other day to this guy, because we're, we're looking at buying a Cadillac Escalade here to, to keep at our lake house, because you know we're selling our primary home. In- yeah, as long as you're not driving, as long as someone else is driving. I know, here. so we need a bigger SUV when we come back to the lake. We're just going to park at the lake house. So we're like, okay, let's get a Cadillac Escalade. It's like 125 grand American. And I was like, yeah, we'll just write it off, blah, blah, blah. And so we go up there. I'm all excited. I'm like, dude, I'm like just ready to buy the damn car. And they were so bad. They were like, he used the option close on me, man. I'm like, dude, did you just use the option close on me? That's literally what I said. So he's like, uh, Mr. Miner, have you seen enough to make a decision? I'm like, um, yeah, I, I think so. And he's like, well, do you want it delivered on Tuesday or Wednesday? And I'm like, dude, use the option close on me. I'm not going to buy from you. I dead seriously said that. <laughs> it pissed me off so bad because I'm like, dude, like you savage his sales thing was so bad the whole time i'm just like even my wife was like gosh can i just not talk to this guy like it yeah. was embarrassing so it's we're gonna really go buy that one hundred thirty thousand uh, dollars car from a different cadillac dealer about two hours north of us here this weekend just because of that yeah i mean it's you know really similar much smaller I, one of my friends is having a baby so i went to buy them one of those hermes baby blankets yeah you know a very nice gift and the salesperson was so bad i walked out without buying it i bought it online they're so bad i was like i can't in good conscience allow you to think that that was okay i just walked out i was it's like this so is so true. terrible I, when we go buy our next car we're going to fly to a dealership that we've trained so we can be sold the right way exactly 100%. and then maybe before we do that organize some commission structure or something <laughs> <laughs> exactly hey, i'm sending a referral in <laughs> i'm sending a referral all right that's what we got for you today hope that helped you the three-step formula to craft your presentations, no matter your product, your service, your industry, if you have one call close, two call close, if you're in a multi-close complex sound environment, doesn't matter. Three-step formula structure, those pillars are the same, connects the emotional dots. As well, if you haven't joined our Facebook group, go to Sales Revolution right now. I've got a link here. You can join for free, Sales Revolution. Matt and I, our vice president of sales, his name's Marco Cortese, he's a savage. We go live in there all the time during the week with different trainings, different Q&As, different topics. In fact, this presentation topic, I went into far more detail on a live today for about 35 minutes in far more detail than what me and Matt just did there for sure and gave you very specifics. When you join, you'll answer like a two or question survey. So we know what industry in, what you're looking for. And we tag you right when you join the Facebook group and we send over a free 35 minute training that we put together just for you on how to prevent objections from even happening in your prospect's mind before they come up, objection prevention. So enjoy that. And if you want to know more details about all of our different training programs and options, we have if you want to increase your sales when you join the facebook group just tag me or matt and either me or matt or someone on our team can message you more details matt thanks for being on yeah. make sure you go in there and at the very least suck up all the free training that we do you know and it's crazy because here it is like august here where i'm at in the united states you're over in our sydney australia corporate headquarters and it's freaking winter so you've got like a sweatshirt on like a Rigged freaking up. jumper or hoodie it's so weird it's like 95 degrees here i'm like sweating to death yeah sun's on the other side sun's on yeah. the other side baby all right Enjoy. We'll see you next week. Thanks. Hey guys, if you enjoy these, here's another you can watch right over here, right over here. Join our free sales revolution group. Click the link below. Join us and we're going to help you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you real soon.